doing some sort of steady state or cardio, we'll call it cardio, but you know, aerobic focus. Yeah. Definitely challenge or push that the ability of your heart to meet demands with an increase in heart rate. Now, the extent to which that is useful um, is is difficult to say. Some in, some there's some research to suggest that that kind of plasticity of heart rate is a predictor of long-term cardiac health or uh, all-cause mortality. You know, this idea of, of a VO2 max or a MET value. Um, being a predictor of all-cause mortality in the long term uh, does have some play. Something about learning to kind of hum along at a lower effort level that may improve that, that heart rate response in the long term. There is clearly a, a lot of individuals, they call it athlete's heart, where if you are a big, big endurance athlete, you'll see an increase in the size of the left ventric, ventricle, the actual chamber, but also thickening of the heart muscle and in most of these individuals, when they stop being um, when they stop being athletes to the extent that they are competing, those adaptations adaptations seem to revert. Their their heart muscle seems to reduce its thickness. The the actual ventricular size seems to reduce. Um, so there are some central adaptations that, in the long term, might not be helpful. There's actually some uh, in these really high end endurance athletes. There's been demonstrated low intensity tachycardia. So imagine a, a, imagine a high-performing automobile with a big camshaft for you car guys out there where it barely idles. <laughs> it's, 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 practically, it's on the verge of stalling out. But then it screams at high RPM. It functions beautifully. It just it runs like the wind, but it can barely idle. It's almost as if there's been a central adaptation that's similar to that. These individuals can cruise along at 90% of their heart rate for just miles and miles and miles but in those early stages and low intensity stuff the heart almost is it's almost like the ventric ventricle is too big to just supply blood and the the vascular structures have been too dilated to supply that low amount of blood at that low intensity it's a weird kind of thing so that's not a long term you wouldn't want that health yeah. adaptation and and the number of, of high high level athletes that drop dead because they're almost like a car that's off that runs like the wind until it breaks and when it breaks it breaks badly but that's not, you're not at risk of that. This is 100, 100 miles a week for years on end kind of thing. This yeah. is not, I'm going running, you know, I'm running 5 to 10K a week at a conversational pace. Mm. And in fact, that's where the literature, I mean, Kenneth Cooper, father of aerobics in America in the 1970s, his line is, if you're running more than 15 miles a week, you're doing it for reasons other than health. Um, and, but that's just aerobic and he kind of, he encourages a lot of resistance training now. So backing it off to your original question, is there some sort of long-term health adaptation centrally? Doesn't appear to be, there are different changes centrally doing just aerobic versus just resistance training, but it's a matter of degrees and in a long-term prediction, it doesn't appear to make much of a difference.